I, I mean, Alibaba bottomed in March around $73 a share on the US ADS. Uh, and then when we spoke, as you said, in May, it was in the mid 80s and now it's back in the mid 80s. Uh, but uh, I, I think we're we're through the worst of it. I mean, we are seeing uh, more and more regions reopening in China. We saw the good news in Macau that they're going to be reopening. Uh, but, you know, the, the beauty of these periods that are perceived as tough times uh, actually cause you to go back and sharpen your pencil. And we all know the general story. You own a third of Ant Financial, which is very valuable. They have a lot of cash. The e-commerce business will grow when things normalize. Uh, and the cloud business is the you know kind of free option moving forward. Uh, I want to kind of drill down on the cloud business because I didn't even realize the magnitude of what that means moving forward uh, until I uh, really, really put a sharp pencil to it of late. And what sparked that was McKinsey a, a few weeks ago. Uh, the big consulting firm came out with a report that said the China's public cloud market was going to triple in size uh, in the next couple of years from $32 billion today uh, to $90 billion by 2025. So that's that's very, very fast growth. Uh, now, Alibaba has 36.7% of the market currently. I think that share will actually grow. Uh, because uh, due to the regulatory crackdowns and the unfavorable uh, business environment with COVID zero that uh, businesses had to contend with for the last 12 to 24 months, uh, which is going away, I think uh, Bob is going to be kind of the last man standing. Tencent is very far behind in terms of cloud share. I think they're at about 11%. Um, if you look at the business when it uh, gets to scale, and I'm going to compare it to Amazon Web Services, which has a 29% operating margin uh, today. If you look at that $90 billion market by 2025, assuming they don't grow share and they, they retain a 36.7% share, that's $33.3 billion top line compared to about uh, $11.8 billion right now. Uh, but the magic of that is going to be the operating leverage. So uh, as you get to scale, we saw the same thing with Amazon Web Services. Once you get to 20 and 30 billion, you start to get into that 29% uh, operating margin region. That's going to be $10 billion of new operating income to Alibaba. Now, why is that important? Well, let's assume that the rest of their businesses don't grow anymore, which, by the way, is a completely faulty assumption because, you know, I just had uh, uh, lunch last week, well, both dinner and lunch with one of the largest developers in Istanbul, Turkey. They actually build the soccer stadiums uh, in all of Africa the airports, the hotels. And we were talking and uh, I was talking to them about uh, online e-commerce platforms in Turkey and accompanying countries. And they're like, well, uh, Alibaba made an acquisition and they're just growing like crazy 23% per year uh, uh, compound annual growth rate on the top line. And uh, there's no end in sight. They're gonna be expanding aggressively to surrounding countries uh, and Eastern Europe and, and they're just gonna dominate. And that's like just getting started. So. Leaving aside that the, that the international is going to grow, the Chinese is going to rebound, forget the commerce business. Let's just assume that that's zero. Uh, and the uh, current operating income of which about right now, the total contribution of cloud to operating income is $180 Because at $11 billion of revenue, they have no scale. At $30 billion, they're going to have major scale and they're going to get that 29% operating margin. But um, the current operating income is 15.2. So if you add... $10 billion of operating income to that, uh, you, you know, you're looking at uh, 25, 26 billion if you, uh, if you add it to last 12 months versus peak, uh, kind of, um, you know, pandemic peak, which was six, 16.7 billion. And what that means in English is this, you basically have 60% more operating income in 2025, just on the basis of the cloud growth, assuming nothing else grows, than you did at the peak when Alibaba's ADS was trading at $319 a share. Uh, to put that in perspective, we're trading at, uh, I don't know, $84, $85 a share today. Um, and that assumes peak multiple. So if you apply the peak multiple that the market assigned when the stock was trading at $319 with the growth in cloud by 2025, you're looking at a $510 stock, assuming nothing else grows. Now let's just cut that in half and assume that we don't get a peak multiple that we actually get a trough multiple and no one ever becomes euphoric about Chinese stocks again, and they just give them the lowest historic multiple, you're looking at a 200 to $250 stock. And again, that uh, assigns zero credit for 
The cash on the balance sheet is zero credit for owning a third of Ant Financial, which, by the way, was originally going to IPO at $300 billion. The business has grown in the interim, but you know maybe the market assigns $150 billion today because of the pessimism. At some time in the future, that business will be worth $500 billion to a trillion. That may be eight or 10 years out. And as owners of Alibaba, you own a third. So when I do the sum of the parts and I continue to just assign zero growth to the uh, domestic and international e-commerce growth, which I think both of which are just starting in terms of uh, recovery from zero COVID, uh, in terms of pro-growth policies that have been uh, aggressively in place since March, but not being felt in the economy due to uh, uh, the COVID zero. Uh, that, that is now ending. And then you've got the China National Congress in a couple of weeks. Uh, and if you look at the people that Xi wants to run uh, economic policy post-election, they're very pro-growth and pro-consumption. So, you know, your upside case uh, just on the cloud is, you know, 510 with a full multiple, assuming nothing else grows. Uh, and uh, downside case 250. The key is waiting through the short-term volatility and dealing with it and adding opportunistically when the market has its fits and uh, emotional ups and downs. But uh, I, I've not seen a business set up like this uh, at this scale with this level of moat in my career. Uh, I've certainly seen special situations in the smaller mid cap that were multi, many multi baggers and, and uh, those, are, those are a little easier to find. But in terms of what Alibaba is offering today, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, continue to look at uh, the valuation and, and even Marcel, you know, before I sharpen my pencil on the cloud and what that means moving forward, you know, I think I talked last time to your viewers, you basically have a business that's grown, um, the total business has grown revenues 800% since 2014. Uh, earnings 500% since 2014, and you can buy it for less than 2014 prices, and no one wants it. And that's the beauty of the, the mania of Mr. Market, uh, as Ben Graham taught us in the Intelligent Investor, serving up uh, euphoric prices and despondent prices within a matter of months and years. And right now we're in the despondent prices phase, and you can't give them away. And I can assure you, too, whether it's one, two, or three years from now, uh, we'll be back in the euphoric phase, and, and we'll be laying off our stock. Uh, you know, that that we own in the low hundreds to people in probably the mid 400s and, and uh, you know, you know, mid 300s uh, and maybe a few shares that we hold on to above 500. And, and that sounds like pie in the sky. But if, if you actually do the math, uh, could, could something happen? Could you have, uh, you know, you always have to assign small probabilities. Could you have a China to Taiwan conflict? Sure, you could have that. But everyone kind of knows that. And, and that's probably priced in here. Um, could you have a continuation of ridiculous uh, a crackdown that, ha that had happened uh, 12 months ago. Uh, you could, you have it every three to five years, they do the same exact thing. Uh, could it persist a little longer? Sure. I mean, this one has persisted longer than I had anticipated. Uh, but, um, you know, leaving that all aside, the business continues to grow. And, you know, even though they work at it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they can't seem to kill it.